right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1977 Toyota Sun Raider Camper. Up front is a 2.2 liter inline four. Down below is a four speed manual transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this Sun Raider for a couple of reasons. First of all, according to the owners and all the research I've been able to do, this is one of the last ones in existence which is always pretty cool to be driving. I think this thing is so cool, so unique. I've never driven a vintage camper and I'm excited to share this experience with you today. But if you would like to share your vintage camper or any other vehicle with me, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form, it takes under a minute to fill out and I come out to you and you get a video of your vehicle just like the one you're watching now of this Sun Raider camper. So let's get back to that 2.2 liter inline four known as the 20R. This engine is really, really stout. Some people have said that it is the best engine to come out of Toyota and I can't say I disagree. It makes 93 horsepower and it is struggling to pull all of this weight around. However, it's not actually struggling as bad as I thought it was going to. Like I said, Paradute is a four speed manual. Now I do have another 70s Toyota pickup truck review that I'll link at the end of this video. Funny enough, from the same owners. And that had a five speed, this has the four. And honestly, I don't notice much difference just cruising around town. I'm sure a fifth gear would be nice for the highway, but in my short little review here, I don't really notice it. Last but not least, this truck is rear wheel drive, of course. It's not a four wheel drive truck. However, I do wanna talk about the dually out back because it's not really a dually, it's a fake dually. So what they did when building this RV is they took two rims and welded them together. So although it has two tires on the back, it actually has only one rim on the back, giving this axle the nickname the death axle. It sounds like a metal band, but I promise you it's more dangerous than that. Basically what would happen is if you ever overloaded the camper, one of two things would happen. Either the lugs would fracture and then when you're on the highway, your wheel would come flying off or the welds that held the two rims together would fracture and on the highway, your wheel would fly off. So in either scenario, not good, and they were all recalled in the early 1990s. This truck, however, was never brought in for that recall, and so this still has the recalled death axle underneath me. Thoughts and prayers that I make it through this. So how does it feel to actually drive the Sun Raider camper? It's actually really good. It drives way better than I thought it was going to. It still has all the attributes that made the Toyota pickup from the 70s so good. And please go watch that video because that's a quite lovely automobile. This is just a lot heavier. It feels like that walk out to your car after Thanksgiving at grandma's. The sort of, oh, oh. That's how this truck drives. It's still sporty and fun underneath, but with all this added weight of the camper, it, uh, it can be a little much. So with that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior, and then we'll get to the part that everyone wants to talk about, which is the cap. Well, in front of me, I have two gauges. On the left is my fuel and coolant temperature. Off to the right is my speedometer. That's it. I do have a couple warning lights, but nothing really to write home about. The steering wheel doesn't have anything on it. It has the vintage Toyota logo, and that's it. And off to the left, I have an unleaded fuel only sign, a showing of the 70s my hazard lights, my regular headlights, and a little vent. On the door, manual windows, latch get in and out, that's it. And moving into the center, a simple radio that will do AM and FM. My heater controls, as well as fan on and off, my wipers on and off, ashtray and cigarette lighter. And then off to the right, you'll actually notice this added feature. This was factory installed air conditioning. So it didn't run off of the same vents that the heat used. It actually added its completely own system, which was pretty typical of the era. Like I drove a Yugo with this same sort of setup. So definitely cool to see the original factory installed additional air conditioning system. Then we don't have any center console, meaning no cup holders. Unfortunately, this fails the big friggin' bottle test. whoop de flip and do And then we come to the shifter. It is kind of funny just seeing 
four speeds, but it gets the job done. Then we do have a bench seat that is very comfortable. And like the other Toyota pickup I drove, one thing to note, if you are a bigger guy like me, these seat belts are stressing to hold me in here. They are not very long. So just something to note, people in the 70s weren't quite as round as I am, so par for the course. However, we don't have back seats, but let's hop out and take a look at what makes this camper so special. So we'll start off on the outside. This door is what holds the propane tank for the stove we'll talk about inside. This is a water drain. This is for the city water, so you could hook up a hose at a campsite and have continuous water through there. And then this would actually fill the water tank. So there is a small water tank on board. This cap, this bed cap or bed camper, whatever you want to call it, is fiberglass. And you can actually see, unfortunately, there is a little bit of cracking over here, but you could tell that this is fiberglass. There are some really cool things stickers back here this was manufactured in may of 77 according to the little badge over here you can read that if you'd like but i believe five for may 1977 mo5 so yeah that would be may of 77 really really cool but let's walk through the door so first thing with the door is that yes okay it does have that little door but this whole back end actually opens and i'll show a clip here which is super cool i also get this little ladder love that but coming inside guys i don't know if you're ready for this <laughs> this is awesome so matt and al who have been refurbishing it have done some small changes they replaced the floor this was the original floor pattern very very 70s but they have done a wood floor they reupholstered stuff using the original fabric so this is 90 percent let's say 99% of what it would have looked like back in the day. So let me give you a quick little walkthrough. Over here we have the stove. I mentioned that there was the propane hookup. That's what this is for. You can actually cook on a stove here and a little oven too. Then we do have the sink. That's what that water hookup was for. Take a look down there. And this is not the factory faucet. The faucet has been replaced because they actually still use this for camping, the couple who owns this. Then we do have two benches, one on either side. We'll talk about that in a second. Down here would have been a refrigerator. However, it stopped working probably in 1978. So they removed that and use it for storage. In here, we have some more added storage and a little coat hanger, things like that. This normally could be removed and used as a table right there in the center. However, when they redid the floor, they didn't want to use the table, so there's no support for the table to screw into. You could see this is where the support would go and then stick into the ground. But you can pull these cushions off, lay this out, and this can become a bed, or you can come up here and this, oh my God, laying up here. I know you're not supposed to lay back here while the truck is in motion, but seeing the world from this point of view gives me goosebumps even just standing here. The national parks in our country are so damn beautiful, and pardon my French, but they are. The idea of seeing the Grand Canyon for the first time out of these curved windows. Genuinely, I have goosebumps right now. I'm not even kidding. That is so flippin' cool. But getting back to the features, you could grab this and pull it all the way out, and this would fold into a king-size bed. It's rather hard to get back up there, so I don't want to do that, but very, very cool. And because this truck was built as a camper, from day one it was a camper, they actually removed the rear window, and this is just a pass-through into the cab of the truck. So you could talk, hang out with the driver while you're hanging out back here. I'll close this door so you can get an idea. I mean, wow. So flippin' cool. I can't get over this. And just how period correct 
everything is in here. I wish you could smell it. I wish you could be here and experience this because it is just truly an amazing piece of history. And just the idea of the things that were seen outside of these windows brings me immense, immense joy. So, so cool. Taking my picture. Let's talk about the exterior. Now we gotta talk about the looks and I don't think there's anything more 70s in the entire world than this yellow pickup truck with brown stripes. I love it, I adore it, I think it's beautiful, I think it's just so gosh darn interesting. I love it, I love it, I love it. I could look at this thing all day. I mean, it's just such a time capsule. And I really, really love that. But with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving, and let's be honest, experiencing a Toyota Sun Raider as this squeaky clutch pedal ruins my final thoughts? I'm sorry you've had to deal with it the whole video, but what can you do? from the 70s. Well, I don't really have anything bad to say. It drives so much better than I thought it was going to. It's fun, and that's the biggest thing. I was thinking about RVs and campers in general on my long drive up here. I had about an hour and 45 minutes to get to this review today. And I love campers because they signify and open up opportunity to explore this beautiful country or the world abroad. I, in recent years, have fallen in love with national parks, and I make it my goal to visit at least a handful of them every year. And doing so in a vehicle like this would be so fitting. But more than that, this is a piece of automotive history, something we don't really see much of anymore. You see, the Sun Raiders were built by Gardner Pacific Corporation out in California. And what they would do is they would buy, or Toyota would provide, the truck, and then the corporation would build the fiberglass body on the back and sell it to people. Here's an actual, original advertisement from a magazine for this Sun Raider. This is an awesome piece of history. And it made me start to think about the 70s and 80s where road trips really began to be a part of American culture. Yes, we got our highway system really in like the 1950s and 60s, but cars weren't fully capable of sitting at 70 miles an hour, or at least doing so happily or in a very safe manner. In the 70s and 80s, it became regular to drive your car at 70 miles an hour. Power brakes were becoming standard. Seat belts were starting to come around. And so this truck really embodies the great American road trip when it was at its peak. People favored this truck because it wasn't a giant motorhome. They were 20 feet long, which, yeah, that's a big vehicle, but it's not as big as you could go. It still let the truck be maneuverable. And relative to the rest of things, pretty easy to drive. And I have to agree with that. I don't know if... Maybe it's my age group, or maybe it's from pop culture, or whatever the reasoning. I have always romanticized the 70s and 80s. My parents grew up in that era, and so any photo book I've ever looked at has been from that era, from this era. And so I can't help but look and drive this camper and just smile, just smile in the dumbest, cheesiest way because this truck's sole purpose is to make its occupants happy and i am very very happy today i hope you guys enjoyed the video huge thank you to matt and al for letting me take out this camper they rescued this from a farm out in montana they have an entire video driving it back here to the midwest up to wisconsin they've refurbished it they've treated it and given it the glory that this truck really truly deserves they have their own youtube channel wisco shenanigans please go check it out they have a couple videos on this camper and it's just something you don't see anymore and is so so cool i hope you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to rate the video comment on the video and subscribe if you really liked it take care guys